you could make torch arrows to light up faraway places? What if you could use banners for different designs on your bed? And this is every new idea that should be added to Minecraft. And hey, according to the YouTube King, no one's ever subscribed to the channel using their right pinky finger. So if you're up to the challenge, point your fifth digit to that red sub button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Campfires can already be used to replace furnaces, and now they can replace your rockets. Since with this change, we actually use the smokestack from a campfire to boost our elytra in the air. And personally, I think this would be fun to add in just for all the different possibilities for elytra courses. And it only takes one look at something like the new Spider-Man game or Tears of the Kingdom to see just how fun it is when you can light a fire and then ride the current up in the air into the sky. And it would make a lot more sense than using a whole bunch of cows and entity cramming to do it. And since that's already been in the game, I think it's hard to say this is any weirder. Clearly there's a lot of differences between creative and survival. If I listed them out, we'd be here all day. But it's strange when there's weird arbitrary limits between the two. And you can see that particularly with the loom. See, in survival, you're only able to put six different layers onto one banner but in creative mode, that goes up to 16. And so that's why I think we should take after this mod and completely get rid of that limit. After all, creative mode players already have so many different things to play around with that we don't in survival. I don't think this would be even in the score very much. Getting your hands on shulker boxes is great, but doing the chores of making your shulker boxes isn't as fun. Like when you got all your stuff inside of your valuables chest currently, and now you gotta empty it all out into your inventory and then put it into the new shulker box. It's a pain. And that's why I think this idea is both simple and genius in its execution. Here, when you're holding a shulker shell in both your offhand and your main hand, and then you shift right click a current chest, you just turn it into a shulker box right there in the world. You don't need to move inventories or anything like that, it's really super simple. And I know it seems weird to be looking for less ways to craft in a game called Minecraft, but adding this in addition with the other recipe, I think it'd just be a fun easter egg, and one that could speed up time for those of us that need it. If you've ever forgotten that you're wearing an elytra, you'll be happy this one exists. Since unless you're playing in third person or you just checked your inventory screen, it's hard to be exactly sure if you've remembered to put this on, which could lead you to jump off of a cliff and quickly get a reminder that you didn't equip it. So with this idea, our armor bar would look a little different, where the elytra would take up one slot on the left side of the armor bar. It's an elegant solution for sure, and one that could save me from accidentally dying in my world, which I'm all the more thankful for. With the addition of the deep dark, we also got a new functionality to our wool blocks, which is that we can use them to block out different sounds from the skulk sensors and shriekers, which is great, but I think we could use these wool blocks to duff in sounds outside of the actual deep dark. And for one, Using these with minecart roller coasters would be really nice. So Quark's idea of having it where you place the rails on top of wool blocks to produce less sound makes a lot of sense to me. And if we were able to use these with the kind of entity cramming minecart contraptions that could throw off a lot of sound, that I'd be even more thankful for. Because right now I have to turn down my game sounds to even be able to tolerate something like this. I'd much rather just shear sheep and solve it that way. By crafting together a normal torch and an arrow, we can get ourselves the new torch arrows. And the idea here is simple. Load these up with your bow and you can shoot them to place a torch where they land, which when you're exploring the caves below can be an invaluable resource. Let's face it, without a gamma boosting mod, these caves are big and it's hard to see the other end. So this is at least a new way to find it. And it could also give you a cheaper alternative to getting a flame bow, just not as renewable as one, which I think is a fair trade off, letting us light up both your world and your enemies. Mending is one of the best enchantments in the game, but it could be better. Since why do I need to get more XP to repair my tool when I'm already at level 137? It just seems wasteful. So how about instead we can use some of the experience that we already have saved in the bar to fix up a tool like this. Surely enough, the idea of a grappling rope was tossed around back in 2018, and the idea as stated is that this would function as an early game alternative to the Ender Pearl, allowing players to easily get around the jungle trees and ravines, but with a much shorter range than the Ender Pearl. Though another plus for a grappling hook is that you won't have to take damage when you reach your spot, just make sure it doesn't break while you're trying to use it. And with an easier way to get around the tall trees, these monkeys could offer up another reason to explore the jungle. Currently, the top of the jungle is pretty barren, so it's good news that Mojang currently has monkeys under review, and hopefully we'll be able to see these new mobs on top of the canopy. Maybe they could even function like the dolphins do, being passive at first, but if you get one mad, the whole barrel of monkeys will attack you. They did already design a monkey for the China exclusive mob vote, so maybe that hard work could still come back and make it into the final game. Nowadays, when we get a new update that comes with a new panoramic background on the title screen, and while those are nice, what if we could customize a bit? See, 
I think it'd be neat to have the chance to take a panoramic screenshot of our own worlds and then plug it into the title screen. After all, some resource packs already allow for this as is. So getting a base game just makes sense. Most people light TNT like this, but now we can light it like this. See, this mentioned feature could allow us to lay down gunpowder as a fuse and then light it to catch fire along the trail. That way, when your TNT contraption explodes, it doesn't explode any of the valuable redstone with it. And this might even be a way to send a path of fire towards your enemies. Just saying. In recent years, colorblind options have become a mainstay in different options menus. And that's cool to see. I mean, it's always nice to have something more accessible. And while the changes to the ores in 1.17 is a big step in the right direction, I think it'd be great to see more colorblind options going forward. So whether that's making ancient debris different from netherrack, reshaping the dyes, or anything else, I'd love to see these changes. Dying in the void is the worst way to go, but with this totem, we'll be just fine. See, while the usual totem of undying doesn't work in the void, this special one lets us fall into the void and then respawn safely up on the ground. So if your elytra were to break over in the end islands, at least it isn't a total game over. Or what if instead of dying, you just kept falling, and falling, and falling right up until the point where you get teleported right at the top of the world. That way, instead of a long drop to our doom, we get a second chance for survival. And that way, if you're able to clutch it with a water bucket, you're completely good to go. Though even if you do die, at least your stuff should still be attainable back on land. Now I'll admit, my eyes are bad, and my optometrist will tell you as much. But even with my lackluster eyesight, I don't think I'm the only one who has trouble telling whether this is an 8 or a 3. Truly, with low contrast backgrounds, the Minecraft font could be tough to read. So while it's not that big of a problem in the scheme of things, it might be worth a second opinion. I'd like you all to meet my new pet, Mr. Owl. And you see, Mr. Owl is a new tameable pet that could make it into Minecraft. And the idea that Mojang's hinted at is that this mob could be tamed like a parrot, but instead of dancing to music, you could use them to deliver things like written books as messages. And from there, you can send it to your friends or your enemies. Your pick. Picture this, you're mining obsidian, and then, right as you're about to finish, you get hit and now all of that progress is gone. So to avoid another 10 year mining excursion, something to add could be the ability to multi-mine blocks. That way, if we slip up, we still have time to continue breaking it without wasting all that effort that we put in before. And better yet, if two players mine the same block, this could let them break it even faster than before. This is what a Minecraft beach could look like. And since 2018, this has been in talks of getting added in. And if it is, it could look something like this, or even take inspiration from the huts you see down in Bora Bora, or even Pokemon's Pacific Log Town. And any of those options look a lot better than a village spawning awkwardly like this. So if Mojang is still considering this, I hope that they look toward fan creations like this for inspiration. Now, I get it, soups and stews are not the most popular food items in the game, but even if some players neglect them, I still think it'd be worth fixing these particles. Because I for one think it's odd that Steve goes through the effort of biting chunks off the bowl just to drink the soup. So to help out our aesthetics and our manners, how about we remove the eating particles when drinking one of these soup items? What if instead of a perfect cube, we had some bushier options like so? I mean, it only takes one look to vanilla tweaks to see that this add-on goes a long way. So while squared off leaves do get the job done, let's just be honest, getting the job done and getting that wow effect are two very different things. And when your forests start to look like this instead of this, I think the choice is obvious. When you're trying to kill a baby zombie, every piece of grass that you find turns out to be an inconvenience. So instead of missing your sword swipe when you try to kill the ankle biters, what if we could swing through grass to kill these baddies? And then if you actually do want to break the grass, just use any other item than a sword. But be sure to keep an eye out for any crabs while you're visiting that beach village, since those could also be added to the game. In the future, we could see these little guys walking side to side on the revamped beaches, pinching anyone that gets too close. But if you do manage to kill them, they could offer up a new food source in the form of crab legs. Or maybe you're less violent. In that case, just play some music. I hear that they like to rave. Nether ward is a pain to farm. I mean, there's no way to bone meal or pollinate it, so you're just stuck waiting for the thing to grow. And then to make it worse, it's tough to tell the difference between the crop's middle and final stages. So what if we just recolored the nether ward along its cycle? That way we'd know when it's time to harvest and then make the potion prep a lot less tedious. Having a quick and easy way to replant the seeds that we reap would be a welcome addition to the game. That way, instead of having to break the crop, pick up the seeds and then replant, we could do it with a right click to finish in one fell swoop, which would make using bone meal so much easier. And we could do it all without the need for a redstone automatic farm. Minecraft's trees are ready for a change, or 
four changes really, since having the features change is already a feature currently under review by Mojang. And Dinner Bones even said as much, saying that there's an idea to have 500 days to a year, which at 20 minutes for a Minecraft day would be nearly 42 hours of in-game time for a season, which means you could spend an entire 100 days Minecraft challenge without ever seeing the leaves fall. But even if we just get a minor change, kind of like how Bedrock's leaves turn white with the snow, that'd still be a welcome addition. Maybe this is just me, but when I get into the groove mining blocks with a haste to pick I could often lose myself in the flow, only to realize one second too late that my pickaxe broke. So for those like me, maybe having an indicator of the tool's durability in the sprite could be nice. That way you don't have to be laser focused in on the hop bar just to stay in the know. Picture this, while looking for mending on your new pickaxe, you go to grab an enchanted book out of your chest, only to spend way too much time sifting through to find the right one. It's a definite pain, and one that we should avoid. So how about instead, enchanted books had a distinct sprite or animation to differentiate between. That way, all it takes is a glance and the choice is obvious. Third person in Minecraft is pretty useless, but with the ability to freely rotate our camera around Steve, we get a whole new way to play the game. And now it's much easier to see what we're looking at and react accordingly to any dangers on all sides. Because right now, the only thing that the F5 button is good for is a cringy Minecraft intro. In Bedrock, you can move a chest with a piston, but that doesn't work in Java. At least, it doesn't for now. But there might be plans to add in parity between the two versions so that we could push tile entities in Java. If anything, Nembon, who made the carpet mod where you're able to push these tile entities, now works for Mojang as a senior game developer. So I'd figure it's not that far out. And you can mark my words, as soon as this gets added to the game, Mumbo's gonna be rejoicing for a while. Now, beds are made with wool, banners are made with wool. I think you can see where I'm going with this. So it'll be good to know that Mojang is currently reviewing using banners for bedsheet patterns in the future. And after looking at this mod's proof of concept, it's clear to see how well this kind of customization could work. Now, this change probably probably needs an asterisk, because while it would be great to have more variation in blocks like cobblestone, bricks, and the like, I do get that not everyone would go for this. Sometimes you just want the texture you expected, nothing else. So in that case, if this was a toggleable option, or something that the player could choose perhaps with a debug stick, I think that'd be best. Sometimes, Steve and Alex have a weird way of holding their items. Now, I'm not trying to judge, but it just feels off to hold the item like this, instead of this. And since third-party packs have already found a way to fix the floating item fiasco, it might be worth getting this into the game, because as much as I'd love to have telekinesis, it's a lot less cool when it's just for holding sprouts midair. What if the snowy biomes looked like this, instead of this? With this simple change, the snow can pass through the leaves and make sure that no spot of the biome is uncovered, letting that winter wonderland feel a lot more wonderful. As you'll see, these concrete stairs and terracotta slabs might be coming in a future Minecraft update. Now, many fans in the community want to see some kind of colorful slab or stair added into the game. And thankfully, Mojang's noticed this, and now there's a good chance we could see these in an upcoming update, but when that'll be, no clue. Though with nearly 14,000 votes on the feedback website, I don't imagine they'll forget about this anytime soon. It turns out the Strider has a cousin, and these angry fellas are called Straddler. And unlike the usual Strider, these cousins are native to the Basalt Delta's biome, and they're hostile to boot. Meaning that if we were to get near them, they'll, no joke, launch their own tadpoles as a projectile for damage. Which is pretty brutal, but it is worth defeating one of these things. Since if we do, we can get this rare drop and use it to make a literal surfboard for the lava. Instead of a Minecraft inventory like this, let's try this instead. See, with just a simple option to toggle between light and dark colors, we could save our eyes that hassle of playing Minecraft late into the night. And come on, Minecraft's title screen already got a dark mode, so why not get one for the rest of the GUI? If you've ever put a banner on a shield, I'm sure you've recognized this pain. Because even though the pattern looks one way here, when you put it on the shield, the design gets cropped so it's pixel consistent. And honestly, that's just confusing. So why not make the designs the same that they are elsewhere? After all, if I'm spending a golden apple on a banner, I want to see that in all its glory, not just part of it. Without checking, which has more saturation, cooked salmon or cooked cod? Well, by adding a feature like the apple skin mod, we'd be able to see that the answer is obvious. So instead of guessing and wasting our food, the hunger value would just be shown on the bar before you eat it. And while you're enjoying that 12 saturation rabbit stew, it'd be cool to see Mojang step up their eating animation to have a proper look like so. So by adding in unique animations, it'd be a lot more entertaining and logical to say the least. What's worse than a creeper exploding? Well, apparently it's the opposite. Since if you get too close to this creeper and let it 
explode, then that explosion will cause the blocks within range to flip upside down, which is somehow even worse for your builds. And now instead of just having to patch up a creeper hole, you'll instead have to tear down all this inverted mess, which is annoying to deal with, but that might just open up the perfect opportunity for a prank. Depends on how evil you are, I guess. Helmets are a staple in any armor set, so obviously you're crafting one of these for your noggin. But when you put it on, do you notice anything weird here? Or rather, do you notice a lack of something here? Because while the iron, gold, and diamond helmets have a nose piece when we wear them, the sprite doesn't match up. So why don't we separate these from the leather option and give them a more accurate look. Signs are a great way to label your chests, but as soon as you try to open with one, it's too tough. So instead of avoiding the sign altogether, a simple right click through the sign would make all of our problems go away. And hey, maybe there's some version of this for item frames as well. That way we don't have to accidentally rotate the item when we try to open up the chest. Sometimes when you notice something, it's going to be tough to unnotice. So I apologize in advance, but you got to know that shields do not line up in the center of an item frame. And I know, it bothers me too. And hopefully, with this being reopened on the bug tracker, we might see some progress on this front. And then we could all rest easy knowing that the item renders in the center spot. Behind closed doors, Mojang has talked about adding a jellyfish mob to the game. And how do we know this? Well, they said it themselves. See, in the comments on this post, one of Mojang's registered staff mentioned a conversation that the team had had about adding a jellyfish to the game, even referencing the fact that they showed off the concept pictures that the user had included. So it's definitely on their radar. And if you ask me, this sounds like what the glow squid should have been in the first place. Redstone is great, but sometimes it's not always obvious. For example, if we have a target block and you want to know what pulse your shots give off, then the only way to find out is through F3 screens or counting yourself. Not exactly ideal. So instead, what if variable blocks like targets or daylight sensors gave a clear readout of their signal? Then we can ditch the guessing and just get to the building. In Bedrock, all it takes to place a bunch of blocks is to hold down the use key. But in Java, you need to be rapid clicking just to get it all done, which can be a real hassle, especially when you need to destroy some misplaced blocks. So in the future, it'd be nice to just do the same and hold down the right click to place a stack of blocks as easy as this. But while you're accurately placing all those blocks, it's frustrating to see that even in creative, we have a limit to how far we can place our blocks. But on a creative world, you'd think that'd change. So to eliminate those setbacks, why not have an infinite reach to let us place and build blocks from a distance? And that'll let this limitless mode feel a lot more, well, limitless. This is creative mode, this is spectator mode, and this is camera mode. According to Dinnerbone, adding in more advanced camera controls for cinematics is still on the list. Though, take that with a grain of salt, since this tweet was back in 2014. But hey, it hasn't been deconfirmed, so I'd say there's still hope. And since there's no replay mod for Bedrock Edition, I'd love to see that version finally get these features as well. Minecraft spiders are not very scary, but this can change that. See, if our spiders were able to crawl up the walls like this, instead of the awkward way that they're used to, that'd be a welcome challenge to deal with, though it would be much more scary, so this should probably just exist in harder difficulties only. Orientation could play a big part in redstone, so if you place something like a hopper or an observer the wrong way, you're going to have issues. But the sticking point there is that, from certain angles, you can't tell which way it's facing. And if you ask me, that's an overcomplication. So maybe adding arrows or indicators to the sides of important redstone bits could save a lot of headaches going forward. Now, this has been an issue for some time, but have you ever noticed that while holding certain items in the game, you can and find a seam of sorts stitching together the side. Well, that's because of how Minecraft's technique works for converting 2D textures into 3D models. And as you can tell, it's not the most thorough. So some form of stitch fix to these pixels would be quite nice. And as you can see with this example, it's clearly possible. As it is, we can't place two slabs of different types on one another, but maybe it's time to diversify. And if we were able to mix and match slabs, we could bring a whole lot more color and variety to your build, one half step at a time. And while we're at it, why not get vertical slab placements as well? That way, we can add more depth to your builds, or even just make an extra tricky part of a parkour course. But if we're revamping the slabs, it might be worth making it so that we can break one half slab at a time if we want. Right now, two slabs break like a full block. But if you want to mix and match different slab combos, it seems like an easy fix to just be able to shift and then break which one that you want. And it would make our mistakes in the future a lot less noticeable. Did you know that Mojang considered adding in a soul fire blaze? Surely, in the Ask Mojang Midsummer Special, Jeb confirmed that they liked the idea of adding a soul fire mob, but they weren't entirely sure if it'd be another variant of the blaze. So perhaps more likely than that would be a new mob that's tied to the soul fire in some way. And my vote for that is this user's concept of using a soul fire wolf. 
which already looks perfect for Soul Sand Valley. As you probably know, Minecraft's textures are 16 by 16 by default. And while that works, it does pose a problem for something like this. You see, the way that it is, the command block panel is doomed to be off center. And while we could fix this with 32 by 32 texture, it may make more sense to redesign the panel like so. That way we have three pixels on each side and our minds can be put at ease. This new feature transforms Minecraft's nighttime from a nightmare into a dream come true. With these shooting stars, we have the chance for a real rare event to shoot across the night sky. But there's still one problem. You haven't subscribed yet. Ugh, that's bad, sorry. But there's still one problem. Even though this was shown in the official Taiga Biome trailer, those trailers aren't always accurate to the game. So maybe this is just wishing upon a star. Now, instead of doing redstone like this, in the future, we do redstone like this. Sure enough, even if Mojang isn't planning vertical slabs, vertical redstone is still in the picture. And when you look at it, it seems like a natural evolution of redstone. I mean, redstone's basically the electrical cabling of the Minecraft world, so why not let us run the wires along the wall? And when you can power a signal like this, instead of this whole mess, it's so much nicer. Any builder will be quick to tell you that leaves and vegetation can liven up a build. But while that's true, unfortunately, there's a missed opportunity here. Take a look at the oak leaves next to the dark oak option. Very similar, right? And I think that's too bad, considering that new textures always mean new opportunities to innovate. So why not take the simple option and darken the leaves to differentiate the two? Moving around a chest or a furnace can be a real hassle, but if we could just pick them up and move them around, we could remove that piece completely. And that sounds a lot nicer than having to move all the items into your inventory first. Or if getting animals into place for your farm is your concern, then this could solve that too. And when they're added in, why not fly down those colorful stairs with a colorful elytra as well? As you'll see, dyed elytra are another concept that's been mentioned. And frankly, it makes a lot of sense. We can already have different elytra with a minecon cape, so why not let us use the banner designs and customize the wings as well? I mean, it doesn't seem like any minecon events are gonna be happening anytime soon, so it's a fair trade off for any new fans. Why would you build a double door if you can only open up one at a time? So instead, if there are two doors that are placed next to each other like so, the game should recognize it and open up both of them at once, instead of just one at a time. No blocks can open up a lot of creativity, but if you're not a musical maestro, then it could be tough to grasp. And I know I definitely fumble setting up the notes right. So to ease the load of memorizing both the instruments and the notes, why not just add some way to see the pitch inside the block? That way, recreating your favorite tunes gets all the easier. And I think that sounds great. But but even when they're bushy, any leaves would look weird without logs nearby. So how about having them decay faster after you chop down the tree? Currently, we have to take two trips through the forest, one to chop down the logs and another to pick up all the saplings and apples. So a faster decay would make it so that we dispose of the forest and the evidence even sooner. So the impaling enchantment only deals extra damage to mobs that spawn in the ocean, but that doesn't include drowned because they're marked as undead. It's confusing to say the least, and it could quickly waste your levels if you don't know. So since these enchanted books books don't come with an instruction manual, it would be handy to have a plainly written description to tell you what each enchantment does straight up. Minecraft's deserts are pretty, well, deserted, but not for long. And that's where this feature comes in, the oasis. And not only could this give us a chance to see palm trees, but we could also get special vegetation blocks like these grass sand hybrids, all of which are better than just another pointless well out in the desert. Nowadays, we use emeralds for trading, but if this suggestion gets added in, we could use them for tools and armor as well. That sounds crazy since since it is just a currency right now, but this has been under review by Mojang. So there might be a time where we walk around the village like this instead of this, but the balance in here would be pretty awkward. Since emerald ore is harder to find than diamond, but you can also get a lot of them through trading. So maybe it's best to have them as a tier between iron and diamond that would make sense. That is, if it even gets added in the first place. As you can see, Minecraft's textures have been through quite a few changes, but the biggest of which dates back to the texture update of 1.14. And that's why the programmer art option exists to let let players play with the textures of old. But as any Minecraft veteran knows, there were plenty of textures before this from the retro era. So some way to play with those alpha options in game would be pretty sweet. Stop filtering your items like this. Instead, try a golden hopper. With this addition, it'd be much cheaper and more compact to build a simple item sorter for a farm. So say you want bones from a skeleton farm, but nothing else. Well, just choose bones here and it'll only push and pull the item that we need, while the rest stays up top. 
Copper is now a big deal for Minecraft building, and with that comes the need to wax your blocks as well. However, if you're doing a lot of that, you maybe notice the frustration of how similar the waxed and regular blocks look in the inventory. So for less confusion, why not give a subtle border or sheen to separate the sprites? And then you can still have the blocks look the same when they're placed. What if I told you that you can hatch the Ender Dragon egg? Well, as crazy as it sounds, it's actually come up at Mojang Studios. Apparently, there's been talks of having some way to tame an Ender Dragon as a pet. And while this post mentions having different elemental powers for each one of them, I think just having a baby version of the Ender Dragon that we could raise as our own, that'd be cool enough. And gauging by all of the viral videos that have been made on this subject, I doubt I'm the only one that thinks such. All right, pop quiz. Here I have two friends. Now, which one's at half health and which one's at full? Well, you're both wrong since they each only have one heart. So to fix that problem and make it more obvious which is which, it'd be nice to have a visual way to see someone's health through their name tag. That way, if your friend's running low and they've got a red name, you can pass them a golden carrot to regen. Or if your enemy's still at full health, you'll know to retreat and try again to fight them later. What's the difference between this glass pane and this one. Well, the vanilla one aligns closer to the center, but now we have an option to place them toward the edge of the block, which opens up a lot of capabilities for building, since we can get that same window effect without ever having to use a full glass block, giving us both a cheaper and more efficient method to use for building. Sometimes it can be hard to tell Minecraft things apart, but in fairness, Mojang doesn't always make it the easiest. And I've definitely had my fair share of thinking a melon crop was a pumpkin stem and vice versa. So why not take a page out of Vanilla Tweak's book and delineate between the two crops? And that that way, we wouldn't have to wait for the block to grow before knowing which is which. In Minecraft, we've got a standard jump, a five block jump, and someday we'll have a double jump too. According to Mojang's website, they're looking into an enchantment that, when on your boots, scores you a chance to jump once off the ground and then a second time in the air, which could be very useful for parkour or just saving yourself from sudden doom. Mushroom fields biomes are great, but they're pretty lonely. Enter the Cluck Shroom. With this new variant from Minecraft Earth, we finally have another mob that hangs around with our mushrooms. And like their Minecraft Earth counterpart, they can even leave a trail of red mushrooms when they walk allowing for some new farming techniques for sure. Or if that's not the Minecraft Earth mob that you're looking for, then consider the Furnace Golem. This version of the Iron Golem is a lot more fierce, and it'll even ignite enemies on fire when it protects you. Think of it as a golem with fire aspect. And if you ask me, that's something that both us and the villagers can get behind. Mojang has teased that they're looking into adding additional fruit growing on trees and bushes. And honestly, just the concept of having more logs and blocks to play with, let alone new foods to farm, that all sounds good to me. Instead of a zombie walking like this, what if it hobbled around like so? Or instead of a dog chasing like this, it had a proper run cycle. And this goes to prove that even if you keep the same models, there's a lot more life and realism that's still left to add to these mobs. And adding on to that realism, how about adding some extra details to the mobs as well? Whether that's ears on the pig or horns for the sheep, there's little changes that can go a long way without needing a complete overhaul. Now, this tweak is an old favorite, but for good reason. Because if you've played with connected textures before, then you've realized just how clean these can look. And it makes sense too. After all, who would do their bookshelf like this when you could have something like this? And whether this is done with iron blocks, glass, or even planks entwined like so, some form of connected textures would be a game changer. In one point, Eight, skins got a huge overhaul by adding in a second layer. And now we've got another change. With this, details like hair, helmets, logos, they all become 3D modeled and rendered instead of a flat texture like this. And while the change is pretty subtle from afar, it makes a huge difference when you get up close. And if it's already possible in a mod, I see no reason why this couldn't make it into the base game. Rice is a staple food in many countries. And even though it's not in Minecraft just yet, the team did start looking into adding it back in 2018. And with all of the new recipes that we could to craft with this, this could be a new way to make our standard foods feel even more hunger. And now it's probably just a case of waiting until Mojang finds the right update to tuck this feature into. Now, you've seen a single chest, a double chest, but how about a colossal chest? And with one of these big things, we could store over 210,000 items in just one chest. So instead of yet another hermit craft chest monster, let's opt for this monster chest instead. So I've aired my grievances on banner patterns before, but I think it's justified. After all, the whole point of these is that they're a visual medium, only to all look the same in a chest. That just doesn't make sense to me. So let's add some extra proof to each one and give them each their unique sprite. It might take some extra work, but the new 
look will be much appreciated. What if instead of jungle temples like this, we got this instead? For some time now, Mojang has considered revamping the current naturally generated structures to have a new look. So in the future, we could see a whole different kind of village and outpost than we're used to. And on top of that, in a Reddit AMA, Dinnerbone expressed interest about adding more unique structures for biomes that don't have one, like the extreme hills, the dark forest biome. And personally, I think that the changes to 1.19 perfectly justify a swamp village finally getting added in. All right, so you're out exploring and you need to sleep the past of the day, but doing that gets rid of your spawn point back home. And now if you die out there, you're lost and homeless. So instead, what if we had a sleeping bag that could let us pass the night, but not reset our spawn point? That way we can be safe while we explore, all without losing our safety net back home. At first glance, this might look like a phantom, but in actuality, this here is called the Spectre, a new mob found flying around the end void. See, in the big gaps between end islands, you'll find these space manta rays gliding passively about. And you heard me right, unlike their phantom cousins, these specters are completely passive. But that's only the start of the relationship with these guys. Since if we were to lure it near, we can actually attach a lead and earn ourselves a painless way across the end void gaps. Which is nice when you don't have an elytra. This one's just annoying. You see, when you go to search stone bricks in the creative mode menu, you're treated to something like this. And unknowingly, you grab the first result, only to realize too late that it's infested with silverfish. So to stop this unpleasant surprise, why not add an indicator in the creative menu sprite to show that it's infested? It, because I can guarantee you my first choice is not using silverfish in my next castle. Why do we have blocks of coal, but no blocks of charcoal? Well, we fixed that. And now it's possible to combine multiple blocks into a storage block like so. Whether that's blaze rods, leather, or even a bundle of apples like this, which gives us both a new building block and a way to clean up our chests. In Minecraft 1.19, we're getting chest boats. And after that, larger boats might be next. This suggestion was first considered back around the update Aquatic, but with the new changes to boats in the wild update, it might be time to revisit. Hey, even we showed off the idea in our 1.19 speculation video, so there's clearly a way to make this happen in Minecraft. So if you've got three people in your friend group, you might not have to wait too long before all of you can explore together. You and I are in two different dimensions right now, but you probably didn't notice that since we're using the Immersive Portals mod. And having that ability to create seamless transitions between dimensions would be a real treat to have in vanilla. That way we know exactly what we're getting ourselves into, and we avoid walking straight into a pool of lava right off the jump. Clearly, Minecraft has plenty of armor types to choose from, but while that's obvious in the inventory screen, in-game, not so much. So how about adding the ability to see which armor piece fills in which armor slot in the GUI. So if you're wearing a mix of diamond leggings and leather, you can see as much. And while it's not the most practical, it's a fun detail, and that works for me. The stone cutter is great, but it doesn't work for wood items. So now we've got a wood cutter to help us out. See, a stone cutter makes it so much easier to craft things like stairs and slabs. And now we can do the same for our logs and nether stem blocks, which should help to save us on some wood. And hopefully that'll prevent a few more forests from getting chopped down as well. What if instead of chopping each block of wood individually, all we needed to do was chop one log a few times and that whole tree will come down. That way we don't need to waste the time to climb all the way up to the tree to get our logs. But instead, we could handle it naturally from the ground floor. So as long as you're willing to chop away at the base, that patience will surely pay off. As we've gone through before, Minecraft has its fair share of ripoffs and unfair recipes. But the one that particularly irks me has to be when you smelt full gold or iron armor only to get one measly nugget in return. Now I'm not saying that a full return is necessary, since not all of this metal would melt down that flawless. But this kind of reduction seems extreme. So as Simply Sark mentioned, maybe reworking it so that these smelted down based on durability would be a worthy fix. And anything would be better than going from 72 nuggets down to one. Do not let a zombie get too close to lava, since now they'll have the chance to turn into a new burned mob. And now the thing's basically got fire aspect. Every time that it attacks you, it'll catch you on fire. But believe me, if it was bad enough when this thing touches lava, it gets even worse when it touches water. Since doing that will just turn it into its obsidian form. At that point, it's immune to projection projectiles and resistant to fall damage. Oh, not to mention it also hits harder and takes less knockback, in case it didn't feel lucky enough. But if you manage to kill one of its variants, you will get this new kind of rotten flesh, which is actually useful. You can use it as a furnace fuel. Just be careful eating it. We could also catch you on fire. Minecraft's textures can have their fair share of inconsistencies, but the biggest culprit might just be the bottom texture. Because even though these stay mostly out of our sight, they don't exactly make sense when figuring the other sides. Luckily though, certain mockups exist to show just how the bottom textures could be fixed. 
fixed. So maybe instead of having another pumpkin stem on the bottom of the block, we could have something like this to make much more sense going forward. Villagers have golems and illagers have nothing. Now, this is actually intentional since Mojang has spoken out against adding an illager version of the iron golem mob. And considering that the illagers already have ravagers to help them on their raids, it would make the deck pretty stacked in their favor to have yet another mob helping them out. But in the 1.19 snapshots, it looks as if the illagers are kidnapping the lays and then corrupting them into vexes. So what if they did the same to the captured golems? And having a rusted or evil variant might be a new way to spice up these pillager outposts. Now this is a tree, and this is a tree stalker. Try not to get the two confused, because this big beast is something to be afraid of. With the six different variants of birch, oak, spruce, acacia, jungle, and dark oak, these things are meant to mimic the trees that we're used to, but with an aggressive twist. And while I think it's silly for one of these to only drop one log in defeat, I do think it'd be cool to have some kind of ends in the base game. For a while now, Minecraft has had more than one stone type occupying the caves, but when it comes to crafting, andesite, diorite, and granite seem long forgotten. After all, blackstone was added in much later than those three, but it could still be used to craft stone tools and furnaces, which to me seems like an oversight. And then given that the tools are called stone and not cobblestone, it would also make sense for clean stone to work as well. So if Mojang ever decides to revisit these crafting recipes, I think it's worth adding these into the mix. When Notch is still working on the game, he originally planned for spiders to be able to spread webs, but that was mentioned all the way back in 2009, and obviously it never made it into the game, until now. And with this, both spiders and their cave spider variants are able to produce webs in the players nearby. And that not only makes these a lot more annoying to deal with, but it also makes it a lot more annoying to clean up after you've killed them. So just remember that if you use a water bucket, you're able to easily get rid of cobwebs like this. Believe me, that's a lifesaver when you have to deal with it. Let's face it, wandering traders are boring and they have bad traits, but goblin traders on the other hand, these ones are worth your time. These guys can spawn in either the caves or the nether, but regardless of where you find them, they'll usually have some serious stuff to buy. I mean, just look at how ridiculous this fishing rod is. Just make sure you don't hit them, otherwise it might get a little agitated. Instead, you should just feed them their favorite food, which is a lot more pleasant for both of us. And honestly, when they can give you traits that have enchantments as high as this, it's worth staying on their good side. Minecraft's villagers used to look like this. See, back in 2010, a player suggested adding in pigmen as NPCs into the game. And for a time, these were the things that were planned to live in the villages, instead of the squid words that we all know today. But even though that got shelved, the idea of zombie pigmen did make it into the game. And so we got these instead. Though even those mobs were removed to make room for zombified piglins instead. So it seems like Mojang can never quite decide what to do with them. Which is a shame, since the idea was that you could even hire these pigmen as bodyguards, which is something Mojang even refuses to do for villagers. But let's talk about that later in the video. Don't kill cows at night, since if you do, you run the risk of them turning into zombified versions of themselves. Because of this change, any passive vanilla mobs that you'll kill will turn into a zombified version of themselves if you kill them at night. And they're not just gonna attack you, they'll also attack other animals and villagers too. Man, take note, because some of them have unique effects as well. For example, the llamas will now spit poison at you, and the dolphins are able to drown you if you get too close. But easily the most dangerous happens if you kill a pig, since accidentally hitting one of these with your fire aspect sword will just cause it to explode if it's lit on fire. So just save your animal killing until the sun goes up. That way you're at least a little safe. Dispensers are famous for automating a lot of features of the right mouse button, but missing among those is the chance to empty and fill cauldrons. And maybe it's just me, but that seems out of place. After all, these things can pick up and place water and lava using a bucket, so why not do the same with a cauldron? And if this was fully implemented, then we could have a way to make operational and automatic lava farms in the 1.17 update. Because doing an AFK farm like this is so much better than this mess. Now, this is a villager night. And while fans would love to see this, Mojang has gone on record saying that they will never make it into the game. Yep, villagers are pacifists, and that's why the iron golems exist. But that doesn't explain why if you use a dispenser, it's possible to equip armor onto a villager like so. And look, it'll even function like normal, allowing our villagers to use the thorns and other enchantments. So maybe this was considered at some point during their development, but going forward, they've put their foot down, and there are no plans to see these violent villagers in the future, even if it would be cool. These planks might not look all that different, but when you zoom in close, there's actually a little bit of depth that gets added in. And that's just scratching the surface of how much stuff this makes 3D. Like the items and plants that were used to just being completely flat, now have their own 3D model associated with them. And I think for plants specifically, this would work really
really nice. I mean, it's a lot better than just 2D textures overlaid in a cross formation. And when you see these layout in your hotbar as well, it's hard to deny that they fit in better with the blocks, even if it is a little bit cursed to see on the first time you see it. <laughs> it's definitely not familiar, but it's also pretty cool. This here is called a tortoise, emphasis on the ore. See, these might look docile, but there's actually more to them than that. And if you attack them the wrong way, these neutral mobs will turn aggressive on us. So to get at the ore in their shell, we'll need to use a pickaxe like so to get the mineral. But be careful, because when they run out, even hitting them with a pickaxe will cause them to do a vicious shockwave attack. So instead, let's stay on their good side. Because if you take them home and feed them glowberries, you can farm more ore in a safer way. And that seems better for both of us. Gold armor really never gets a use. And while the addition of piglin barding might mean that you're wearing a pair of golden boots, that still doesn't have much to say for the other pieces of the armor. And so to change that, I think taking after vanilla tweaks and making the golden helmet into a golden crown would be a really nice touch. For one, we barely get any variation between most of the helmets anyway, so it'd be nice to switch it up, but I also particularly like how this looks when mobs spawn with it. Like, take a look at this skeleton wearing a golden crown. Now that's not just a skeleton with armor, but it's a skeleton with a story. Probably one of the tragic fate. But this is also one that I personally play around with on our server. I just really like the look of it. And it would make it nice to join the gold head group if we all could be kings instead of wearing the worst armor in the game. These frogs might look cute, but that's how they get you. Since the truth is that these are actually the poison dart frogs that you'll have to look out for. And by just touching one of these new frogs, you could wind up with a number of different potion effects. Like the red one, which makes it so that you can't heal anymore. Not even with potions or golden apples. But even with that, the most dangerous has to be this yellow one. Because uh, as you can see, this one will give you the deadliest poison effect in the game. Which is maybe more of a reason why you shouldn't go around punching frogs, in case you needed one. Exploring is a necessary evil in Minecraft. And with that comes a lot of walking. Or more bluntly, a lot of pressing the W key. So that's where the folks at the Quark mod pitch for an auto walk key bind in the game. And honestly, I think this could be nice. Not only would this help the game to be more accessible to those with motor difficulties, but it's also just nice not to hold down the same button for hours on end. And if you ask me, it's a simple enough tweak that it's at least worth considering. Why are there no sharks in Minecraft? Well, according to Mojang, all hostile mobs need to be fantasy creatures. Otherwise, they might encourage some real world consequences. Make the sharks too docile, and people think it's safe to approach them, but make them hostile and you might add on to the ongoing shark finning problem. But even though sharks aren't planned for Minecraft anytime soon, the door is still open for a potential shark inspired mob in the future. And besides, it'd be nice to have a hostile mob that's actually affected by the impaling enchantment, since in Java it only works on fish, not even the undead drown mob. For the same reasons that sharks won't make it into Minecraft, crocodiles and alligators are also ruled out. Though, this could have a workaround. See, like the polar bear, these mobs could be very terrifying territorial, but neutral in some way. So maybe they only attack the player's boat instead of the player, which will encourage you to jump across the lily pads in the swamp instead. And really, even though Mojang has ruled this one out, it might be worth reconsidering some kind of implementation with the changes to the swamps in 1.19's wild update. Or if that's still too realistic, how about having a special crocodile that'll blend into the mud, right up until it's ready to bite you. This wandering trader might look innocent, but that's how they get you. Since if you open up a trade with this villager and see this at the top of your screen, you have to make a split second decision. Either you make a rotten trade to keep it peaceful, or you don't buy anything at all, in which case it's gonna get pretty mad. And that's when it reveals itself to be the evil wandering trader variant. And even its llamas become skeletal and evil as well. And every time that you're attacked by the traitorous trader, you will steal your items right from your inventory. And the only way to get them back is from his llama's chests. So make sure to chase after them first. If you're anything like me, you probably haven't heard of a caracal. But by having these wild cats in Minecraft, it's as good of a chance to get familiar with them. For one, these finally give the savanna biome its own unique mob, but on top of that, it also gives us a new feline pet to show off to the world. But the one key difference is that if we were to name one of these a specific easter egg like so, we can get a special caracal costume. And I don't care how many cats Mojang adds in, until they have one that can wear a snorkel like this, I'm not interested. AFK players are a dime a dozen on a Minecraft server, but unless you're nearby, it's not always easy to tell who's missing in action. So a simple yet elegant solution could be to add some form of indicator to let you know when someone isn't at their keyboard. In vanilla tweaks, that's the simplest showing their name grayed out on the tab function. That way, it's not going to be intrusive to the other players. And then, once you get back, you can just move around a bit and the name will change right there. Simple as that. Minecraft stone bricks don't make a lot of sense. And because of the way that the texture repeats itself, the bricks often seem confused as to where they're actually placed. This fixes that. And now, if you look at the top of a stone brick block, you're not going to see any variation between the different bricks. And while this is initially cursed to start looking at, when you see it in practice built like so into the walls, I actually think it looks quite nice. And this way, we still get the stone brick texture 
texture to play around with, but also get some new stone textures to use as well. I can't say that wouldn't be a nice middle ground, and it looks a lot better in the floor as well, at least if you ask me. With certain blocks, orientation is everything, and whether you're building, doing redstone, or a mix of both, I'm sure you've experienced the pain of a misplacement, and now you gotta stop to correct it. So without some kind of item to flip that back into place, what if we could lock our rotation instead? By adding some way to keep our blocks facing a certain way, we could still move freely around the build without breaking our stride. And if you ask me, that would make some of these processes a lot smoother in the future. Capybaras are an adorable creature, and it turns out they're just as cute when we add them to Minecraft. After taming one of these with any of the items that you see on screen, we'll be able to attach up to two chests to it for some extra storage. And even though we can't ride these around like a pig or a mule, we could still use a lead or a melon slice to have our very own walking double chest. Light in Minecraft is a useful thing, but it's not always a comfort. I mean, sure, it's nice that no mobs are gonna spawn, but it only takes one look at something like the warm glow feature added in through vanilla tweaks. We can make our torches and light sources feel so much more comforting. And while I would personally like to see this done in a way where torches give off a different warmth when compared to things like soul lanterns or sea lanterns, I think even the change as is is better than what we have in vanilla. So I would take it across the board instead of not at all. This is not Steve, nor is this guy. See, all of these decoys are just the unreleased human mob, which used to exist in Minecraft, but were removed before the game was officially released. But back in the day, you could just spawn these guys by pressing the G key, meaning that most early Minecraft tests look like this whole mess. And while they were mostly harmless, there was a version that could damage and even kill the player, behaving much more like a zombie would. Though I'm sure if this was added in today, it would go a long way to help out map makers. I mean, you could make your own NPCs in the world. How cool could that be? And I mean, it's a lot smarter than whatever this is supposed to be. If I were you, I'd want to pay attention to these little guys that are down here, the silkworms. Because while they might not look like much, these itty bitty bugs can be a really big help early game. Now first, we'd want to find one of their eggs among the trees, which after we hatch can provide us a source for the silk cocoons that they create. And after you harvest some of those, we can make our very own spindle to have an easy alternative method for string early on. And trust me, that's a lot more pleasant than dealing with yet another cave spider spawner. Torches and vanilla are not very expensive. Exciting. I mean, hold one in your hand and barely looks like anything's there. Just a few pixels jetting out of the bottom of your screen. But with this reimagined change, not only do they fill up more of our screen as we hold them up to illuminate, but they'll also have their own fire animated texture on the top of the flame, which I think looks really nice. And there's even changes to redstone torches as well, giving them an ambient glow to the top instead of just being dark when you hold them in your inventory. And especially if we were to see this change along with something like dynamic brightness mods, where they can actually illuminate the world around you, I think both of those would be really cool to see. Be careful going next to that shipwreck, since now this could just be home to the new zombie and skeleton variants of the shipwreck monsters. And all of those will spawn from the shipwreck's captain known as Deadbeard, which I gotta say is an apt title. And Deadbeard in particular is something of a mini boss in this game. Not only does he have a bunch of health and knockback resistance, but even when you do manage to get it to low health, that's when things get risky. Since then, Deadbeard will take out a TNT barrel, and if you don't kill it in five seconds, it will just explode and leave no drops for you to pick up. So if you see this, kill it fast, otherwise it was awful for nothing. There are many passive mobs down in the caves. Enter the stonelings. Spawning deep underground, these little fellas are pretty shy. But if you sneak up and get the jump on them, we might just get the item that they're carrying. And hey, if you're lucky, you might just get this item from them called a heart of diamond. And with this, we can tame our own stone link to have them hold our items. And we can even change how they look by feeding them different types of stone, all of which makes them an extra handy slot to have for our inventory. Shockingly, in a game called Minecraft, you're gonna do a lot of crafting, which just highlights how tedious some recipes can be. For instance, we've already aired our grievances about just how frustrating it is to craft something like a dispenser when the bows are non-stackable. And there are plenty of items that have a multi-step recipe that just feels like overkill. So while the vanilla options should still exist, what if we could simplify these down for bigger crafting jobs? And then, by making chores a one press or less situation, the upside is clear to see. Minecraft has a surprising amount of things you can put in a bucket, but it's a shame that when you put a tropical fish inside, which has a multitude of different variants to see, they all look like the same texture. And so, having a fix so that we can tell which of the fish that we're putting inside the bucket, I think that'd be great. Plus, it gives us new sprite textures to play around with, which for builders who like item frames or armor stands is also another joy. I see this as a win-win, or a fin-fin in this case. Yeah, I don't know if you put that. <laughs> now at first, the scarecrow might seem like a silly addition. I mean, there's no crows to scare off, but the way this mod does it is that we can make different scarecrows to serve as deterrents to different mobs. For an example, if we wanted to scare creepers away from your base, then this ocelot plushie could do the trick just perfectly. 
or maybe even use an Iron Golem miniature to keep the zombies away from your villagers. And hey, with this option, you can scare off all hostile mobs, if you'd like. And with an eight block radius of fear, these little decoys can do some serious work for us. And thankfully so, might I add. Ask any redstone engineer, pulse lengths are a big deal. So while it's nice aesthetically to have so many different buttons to choose from, it's a pain that only the wood and stone variants have different uses, which is why it might be nice to see some more options going forward. With the ability to craft iron and gold ones like this, we would not only match up with the pressure plates, but also open up more opportunities for redstone. I mean, this literally opens the door for new redstone builds, and I think that's a major plus. Phantoms just got so much worse. And now not only are they annoying, but they're also dangerous too. Since now they don't just target players, they target livestock and villagers too. And as soon as they get by, they'll pick up their prey and then drop them from a high height. And unfortunately, we can't give our pigs a pair of feather falling boots. But possibly the most dangerous change yet is that they even have a rare chance to spawn on nights that you're well rested. So even if you're getting your full eight hours of sleep each night, these revamped phantoms might still be an issue. And those aren't the only phantoms that we'll have to worry about. Because while this might look like a phantom, there's one key difference. And because you're in the end, you're not going to be able to hope for these burning in the sun when daylight comes. Instead, they'll just keep swooping down to attack you relentlessly. And believe me, nothing makes the end cities more difficult than having to deal with a couple of shulker bullets, only to get hit by one of these swooping down to attack you. Or worse is that you levitate up into the sky in their domain, and they'll deal with you there. But you won't be safer on the ground either, since now, next to the end cities, you're gonna find a couple of these purple golems that'll spawn as well. And unlike the other golems that we have in the game, these ones are notably hostile. And if you get too close, they'll just chuck you away. Kinda like a bad level in Super Mario Sunshine. Man, I'd recommend that once you get the elytra, use that to stay as far away from these things as possible. But that's not to say that the trip back to the end gateway is any safer. Since if you happen to come across one of these, you wanna stay as far away as possible. That being the chorus squid mod. And if you're unlucky enough to find one of these blending in with the other chorus plants, it might be too late. Since at that point, these mobs just launch themselves through the air and try to attack you. I love suspicious stew as an item, but I also don't like being suspicious. And so if you're like me and you don't like the roulette game, then having the option to have a pack like this where you can visualize which potion effects is inside of the stew is pretty nice. Now, if we were to get this in vanilla, I would be hesitant with the current implementation. I mean, the textures look great, but they also give away the whole mechanic of the suspicious stew. But maybe the ability to craft it with another ingredient that could let you see what's inside, that'd be nice. Or maybe the stews get less suspicious when you craft them yourselves instead of finding them in a shipwreck chest. After all, if I know what's in it, I don't want to be guessing what I put in. That makes sense to me. Mummies will never make it into Minecraft. Now, why do I sound so sure? Well, because Mojang themselves deemed that mummies and husk would be too similar of a mob to have in the game. And looking at them side by side, I do see their point. But it would be a cool idea to have some kind of mini boss inside of the desert pyramids, similar to how we have the Elder Guardians in the Ocean Monument. And if Tango Tech's concept is anything to go by, there's a lot of potential here for a memorable fight. This hunk of fur is called a snuffle, and besides being just plain adorable, they had a native mob for the snowy biomes. And hey, they're a lot friendlier than strays, that's for sure. Plus, by using slime balls and magma cream, we can change them around in some ways. For instance, with a slime ball, we can swap through one of four different hairstyles to see. And with a magma cream, we can remove their frost and help them be a little less cold. Or instead, just shear their fur off and you can use it for a new form of decoration block called Snuffle Fluff. Recently, item frames have been getting a lot of love, well with the invisible and glowing variants. Which is great, but one thing still feels missing. As we showed in our banners video, there is some way to make colorful item frames, but what if we had a way to do this in survival? After all, with 16 dyes to choose from, the possibilities would be pretty great, and I'm honestly amazed that this hasn't already been added in. And the day that we can make item frames both invisible and colorful in survival mode will be one that I'm happy to see. Not too long ago, Mojang gave us the choice for the fabulous graphics setting in the options menu. But when you turn it on, you might not notice much of a difference between this and fancy. So maybe we could go further with this option and allow for something big, like shaders. In-game shaders have already been teased before with the super secret settings, so letting us enable them in-game like this might be a nice option to see, and it gives fabulous more of a reason for existing. This mob is extremely rare, but if you see it, don't feel lucky. Since even though there's only a small chance of this generating during thunderstorms, this new monster called the Immortal is a deadly opponent. For one, all of his attacks can cause a lightning strike. And then he also has the chance to buff up other zombies around him into more powerful variants. Plus, the closer you get to killing him, the faster he gets. So good luck with that. But despite his name, if you actually do manage to kill the Immortal mob, he'll have a 100% chance to drop a trident. But without difficult that fight was, I would rather just 
just take my lower chances on killing a couple of drowned mobs. If you look across Minecraft's updates, then it's clear to see that the sponge is not Mojang's favorite. After all, for a long part of its history, we had a sponge block that couldn't even absorb water. I mean, the neglect is clear to see. But even since its rework, I think that one feature is still missing. See, while we can dry these things out in a furnace of the nether, if we happen to light one on fire, it's a no-go. Which to me, doesn't make sense. And I think if you have a flint and steel no furnace, you should still do the trick. Minecraft doesn't have a lot of reptiles, so to fix that, let's meet the lizard. If you look around in a jungle or a desert biome, you might see one of these little fellas walking around on the floor. And if you were to feed them with the apple slices you get like so, they'll start to breed and even dig into the ground to lay their eggs, letting us pick them up and even throw them like chicken eggs to get them to hatch. Which, if you have a net, can even let us tame them for our own lizard jam sash. Now, a snail probably doesn't sound too important, but what these things drop is a different story. See, if we were to feed one of these new snail moths a red or brown mushroom, they'll munch on it and produce a few tiles of the snail slime. And if we pick that up, we can use it to create a block of this stuff. Much should we do with slime and honey. Except here, if we were to jump to the base of this, you'll see that we stick to it like so, which offers up some new possibilities for traversal, especially parkour. If you've ever played on a multiplayer server, then you know that some players can be thieves. So in that case, what if we had a way to share items with the world without physically sharing them. In something like Quark, that's as easy as hitting Shift-T on the item in question, and bam, it's shown off in the chat. After all, weapon names are already shown in death messages, so I feel like it's a natural evolution. And that way, we can show off the assets of a potential item for sale without letting the shoplifters steal the goods. Zombified piglins just got even worse, since if they happen to spend too much time in the nether, they could end up as this burning piglet. And unlike the other zombified variants, this one will actually start out as aggressive towards the player. And they don't just hate us, they also hate striders too. Which I mean, Come on, how can you hate those things? And if you let it get too close, when it attacks you, it'll light you on fire. But while it's bad when we catch on fire, it's even worse if you let this thing get next to it. Since for just swimming in lava for 15 seconds, this piglin will get even more powerful. And considering the only unique loot you get for killing this is a couple of netherrack blocks, I'd just as soon keep my distance. And it's not just the undead piglins we have to look out for. Since with the new piglin alchemist, we're also gonna have troubles when we go next to a bastion. And while this piglin by itself isn't anything too scary, what's dangerous is when you let it get too close to the other piglins since this mob has the chance to throw out splash potions to heal them, and also give them a strength buff as well. So if you see one of these in the Bastion Remnant, you should focus it first. Otherwise, it'll be a lot harder to do the rest of your raid. Think of these like the healing crystals in the end. Take them out first. We all know pets can be an important part of the Minecraft experience, but while we can go out of our way to care for these creatures, the game side doesn't offer up much itself. So what if instead of feeding your dog a steak for the 480th time, we could just pet the thing instead? It only takes one look at the Twitter account for Can You Pet The Dog to see that there's plenty of support for features like this. And if it's as well animated as Mr. Crayfish's implementation, I know it'd be a welcome addition. Now, I love the sound of rain, and given how many views there are on ASMR videos, I'm guessing more than a few of you do too. But I also hate looking at rain in Minecraft. Not only does it lower the bitrate of videos, but it also hurts your performance, which overall makes it pretty obtrusive to play with this on. So having a change like this where the rain starts to become semi-transparent to translucent would not only be more realistic, but also a lot more enjoyable to play around with. And the same happening to snow too. Too. And here they also lower the particle count to reduce noise, which I gotta say, I also appreciate. I don't wanna feel like I'm playing in a static TV. This is a lot more pleasant for my winter wonderland. This is a miner, this is a miner, and this is a miner's ghost. Now, the idea behind these would be to have lost spirits walking around the caves that could help guide the player to treasure and valuable ores. But as cool as that sounds, Mojang considered it before ultimately rejecting the idea for making it into the game. And this might have something to do with the fact that ghosts are considered as banned media in certain certain territories. Or maybe they just don't want any ties to a certain creepypasta. Man, speaking of which, Herobrine isn't just a Minecraft myth, he's a Minecraft icon. Dating back to a community-made story on 4chan, Herobrine supposedly leaves around spooky sand pyramids and long, pointless tunnels around your single-player world. And despite what some players try to get you to believe, he doesn't exist and never existed in Minecraft's code. But that doesn't mean that Notch didn't acknowledge it, since in fact, back in the day, Notch did say on Twitter that he planned to add Herobrine into the game soon. Though, this obviously never happened. And the most that we ever got, and likely will ever get, are these official change logs saying things suggesting that Herobrine was finally removed, even if he wasn't there in the first place. Once you carry up to 16 arrows in your inventory, it'll now look like a quiver. And that's thanks to this revamped archery change, which I already personally love the idea of textures changing when there's enough items stacked on top. I mean, a pile of arrows looks different than just one arrow in your inventory. But then to have that partner with these tiny tweaks that we get to how our bows and crossbows look, I think it winds 
ends up really nice. I mean, if anything, I just like the fact that the rock is finally centered. Since the way that it was before in your hotbar, it just looks weird. And having a little bit of gray along the outside of the arrow tip also works nice. I mean, you make them a flint, so it's a nice touch if you ask me. Here's why you should be thankful skeletons use bows and not swords. Since these new grave metal skeletons could be incredibly deadly. And what's grave metal? Well, it's a new material that adds an armor defense that's only slightly less than diamonds, which already makes them tough to kill. But that gets even more dangerous considering that they can also use grave metal for their melee weapons. So why even bother with them? Well, if you kill them, they'll have a chance of dropping some part of the grave metal to use. And once we smelt that, we're able to get ourselves an ingot to make our own, which finally gives us an alternative to regular iron farms. You're just gonna have to work for it. After the village and pillage update, we got the buzzy bees update. But unfortunately, neither of those gave us a beekeeper. So now, thanks to the charm mod, we fixed that. And finally, we have a special profession carved out for our beekeeping business. Have you ever wanted rats in Minecraft? Yeah, me neither. But after seeing Dr. Rat's mod, I was starting to reconsider. These quick moving mobs can be a real help when they're tamed. And you'll see as much when you hit a mob. These packs can annihilate a foe. And hey, they'll even grab the items for you. Or you can give them tools and have them do the jobs like farming for you. Oh, and did I mention that they can fly? Because yeah, with an elytra, they'll take to the skies as well. And just like that, now I'm a full advocate for having rats in the game. Dolphins are adorable, but they could be cuter. Or they would be if Mojang didn't have this rule. But for some reason, baby dolphins only exist in the bedrock version of the game, and there are no plans to add them into Java. Even on Mojang's official list of rejected features, they have baby dolphins listed, with no mention of why that's the case. Though recent updates have seen a lot of steps taken to have parity between Java and bedrock. So there might still be a future where we have baby dolphins in Java. As we've shown before, vines can be a great asset to put to use in your worlds. But while they do add to the aesthetics, they're not exactly cooperative. And it only takes one look at a jungle tree to see just how messy these things can and will grow. So what if we had a way to stop this? Well, if we did something like this approach, then by burning the tips of the vines, the plants would no longer be able to grow past a certain point, which I think both makes sense and cuts down on some chores. There are many players that swear that original Minecraft was meant to be a horror game. And while I think it's hard to find much scary about a game where pigs look like this, but the kind of changes that we're seeing here, I'm a little bit more inclined to believe it. And while some of these mobs are completely off the rails, like I don't think a gas like this should ever be in Minecraft, at least if I want to sleep at night. What we do see with the changes to the spiders and the creepers, and especially the phantoms, I think those are some really nice touches. Even just adding something as simple as glowing eyes to these mobs makes them so much more terrifying. And if that was partnered with harder difficulties, that could be a fun touch. Now it's not just hard for the difficulty's sake, but also for the psychological side. Good luck. See this creeper? Well, if you can't, that's kind of the point. Since now, creepers have the scary ability to blend into their environment, making them much scarier to come across in the caves. And folks, there isn't just a few blocks that they can turn into. The amount of compatibility that this adds in is shocking to say the least, even giving them the ability to blend in with leaves, cobwebs, and glass. And that last one's the scariest, let me tell you that. But given the fact that creepers used to blend in with the alpha grass texture, who knows, maybe this is more intentional. And to me, that's even scarier. If you see a zombie with a pickaxe, you should run away. And the reason for that is that this Undead Miner variant could be devastating to come across in the caves. For one, they don't burn in the sun, so good luck trying to escape one of these by running up to the surface. But adding on to that, there's also four different ranks of these different Undead Miners, starting with stone, then iron, and then eventually building up to diamond. But you'll want to fight them, because if you're able to kill the rarest variant, you'll notice that they'll have unique loot that they can drop. Just watch out where they're swinging that pickaxe, okay? But more dangerous than the zombies that you'll find spawning in the caves happens when you go up to the swamps. And this new swampy variant of zombie can be devastating to come across. And you'll see as much when the swampy variant attacks you, or rather, leaps at you. Which is terrifying, but that's not even the worst of it. Since once it attacks you, it'll also apply blindness and poison effect. Or if it's the baby form, then it'll just explode right next to you. Either case is not ideal. Oh, and make sure to avoid the water. They move faster there too. But the Enderman is the only mob that can spawn in every one of the three dimensions. But they always look the same, and this pack solves that. Since now, not only do Endermen have a new cool design associated with them, but they'll also look differently depending depending on where they spawn. So if you see one in a warped forest, it'll be bluish in color, but find one out in the rest of the nether, and it'll be red. And I think that gives a really cool look, if not a little terrifying, but that's also what kind of makes them cool. And while I can't say there's really any time that I'm happy to see an Enderman, if they looked like this, I'd at least be a little appreciative before I avert my eyes so that I don't anger it. This new addition to the animal family really could be man's best friend. The Sheba is a new dog that spawns in mountain biomes, but with one helpful touch. See, when you throw any trident or shoot an arrow, the Sheba will 
run to it to return it to its owner. On top of that, they will also look for especially dark spots and growl at them, so you can tell where to place your next light source. And best of all, they'll even lay on the bed when you sit them down. Shulker boxes are an incredible thing to have, which is why they're such a late game item. They entirely fix the storage problems, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're user friendly. So why not take after a couple of these mods and rework the block just a bit? In Quark, for example, we can right click items in the inventory screen to add them quickly into the box, which I think makes sense since it's the closest we've got to a backpack. And then above that, it'd be particularly cool to go from a list of items like this to an actual view like so. Wolves are a Minecraft player's best friend, so we should treat them that way. And this dog armor add-on could do just that. With this, we can make our dogs a lot more fierce for battle. And hey, maybe we also don't have to use as many stakes to heal them up after a fight. That'd be appreciated too. With all the texture updates that Minecraft's received over the years, there's been shockingly little attention given to our chests. But adding in a tweak like this could be all that they need, since now we not only give the chest a more modern texture, but we also add in more detail when you open it up. It's not just a black box, there's actually empty space in there. And I think that looks a lot better personally. And especially look at this detail of the ender chest. Here it's a portal inside, and I think that's adorable. And while this example looks great with the nether portal, I could also see this working out with the end portal texture as well. I mean, it'd be a fun bit of lore to add either way. A lot better than just some random ring in the middle of the open chest. Armor stands are a great thing to use in Minecraft survival, or they would be if they lived up to their name. But in Java edition, the only arm that these stands have is in the name. So why not take a note from Bedrock and let us use these stands with the full capabilities? We already can with creative mode and MBT data, so this would just be great by default. Or maybe we could right click a no arm armor stand with sticks to then add its hands. And either way, I'd just like to have some alternative to place my items in an item frame. In a previous build hacks video, we showed off using invisible item frames to give your own kind of jack-o'-lantern faces to pumpkins. And while that original post is a great bit of creativity, I also think it should serve as a great bit of inspiration for Mojang to use in their next texture update. Being able to have random variety or even choose which one of the patterns that you want to add on top of a pumpkin, that would be awesome. And honestly, I'm surprised that they haven't added in the feature to put a creeper face on top of a pumpkin already. That just seems like a layup. And then on top of that, animating the jack-o'-lantern so that they have a little bit more personality, that would be fun too. Especially if it carries over to the snow golems that we spawn with these pumpkins. Minecraft's wolf is iconic, and part of that is because it's the only one to choose from. Kinda hard to lose the competition when you're the only one competing. And while we've talked in the past about getting different dog breeds inside of Minecraft, it is worth noting that as cool as that would be, wolves and dogs are technically different. But hey, wolves also have different breeds too. So, since we already get this kind of love given to our cats and ocelots, I would love to see the same kind of love come to our canine companions. And personally, my favorite part of this resource pack example is the different nether breeds that you can get as well. I mean, look at the wither skeleton version of the dog and tell me that you don't want that in the base game. Or if they won't add in that, then at least just add in the Cerberus version of the dog. Then you get three and one. Hard to argue with that. Name tags are a fantastic option for customization in our Minecraft worlds. But to see the full extent of that, we need to use special commands or even some kind of Unicode trickery for unique characters and colors. All of which I think is too obscure. So instead, what if we could take this option and dye the name tags to add a splash of color to our pets? That way, if you want to start sorting out and color coding certain entities, or even just add in a bit of color to your dog's name, that option exists. And we shouldn't just expect variety up on the surface, since with this example, we'd be able to go down to the different mines and find special versions of the ores depending on where they generate it. So if that coal ore was next to a bunch of granite, it's not gonna stick out like a sore thumb, but instead it'll blend in quite nicely. And while I love how this looks, it might make it a little tougher to read the textures that were added in for colorblind support in the first place. But I also wouldn't object to getting proper colorblind support options inside of the accessibility menu anyway. So if we got this and that as a twofer, I think that could please a lot of fans. At the very least, it'd be pleasing aesthetically. We all know that hunger is worth keeping track of, especially in higher difficulties, which is why it's odd that while riding a horse or any other mount, you can't see the bar anymore. After all, it was changed so that hunger showed up in minecarts and boats, so why are these any different? But clearly, it's also important to see your animal's health bar, so why don't we just stack them like we do with our health and armor? As we see, there's plenty of room here, so it might be worth considering just showing both instead of either or. Minecraft's different entities can get pretty small, but as small as those get, they don't always have the textures that match them. And so that's where we need to start talking about pixel consistent textures. For an example, look at the difference between the experience orbs here and the ones that you would find in the Vanilla Tweaks resource pack. Or look at how much cuter the bat seems when you actually have it with a pixel consistent texture. And you can see similar changes going the other way for things like the Wither and the Elder Guardian, which in my opinion, not only makes it look nicer, but it also keeps it consistent with the other entities that had this from the beginning. At that point, it just seems fair. Minecraft's pigs have never been particularly fat. 
fast. But that all changes when they get in the mud. See, taken after Minecraft Earth, this muddy pig variant loves to roam around in the mud found in swamps. And lucky for us, it moves pretty fast when it does, which means we can ride them for a new form of agile transportation. Or if that's still not cool enough for you, then just know that you can shear its tulip for some extra dye as well, giving us both a new farm and a new ride. Minecraft has a wide variety of plants, but those plants themselves don't have much variety to speak on. I mean, every sunflower that you place down is gonna look the exact same. And I think the idea of having different variations to the plants that we see growing out in the fields, without having to change much at all of the world generation code itself. And after all, we already got a whole bunch of overhauls in 1.18, so I'm not pitching that, but getting something even smaller like this to get a lot of benefit, I think that's always worth it. And particularly seeing the differences in the crop fields that we're planting out in the farms, yeah, I really like that. And seeing that in the base game, that's just a no-brainer in my eyes. Nether wart is a much maligned crop. Since we can't pollinate or bone meal it, then it can be quite difficult to get a large supply, which I'd argue makes some of us even less likely to use potions. So to fix that, why not find some way to farm the stuff automatically? And a solid implementation that I've seen has to be Carpet Extra's use of Clarence. There, the villager can farm nether wart just the same as farmers do to wheat. And if we had this in the game, then I know the potion use would definitely follow. With the name Soul Vulture, these mobs seem pretty daunting. And I'm afraid that's the case. See, these withered remains add a new hostile mob to fly around our soul sand valleys. And if you see one, you might want to keep your distance, since these things are known to actually start sapping your health if you go through like so. Which is not a fun time by any stretch of the imagination, but it might be worth enduring so we can get its drop. Because with one of these soul hearts, we can brew up a potion to let us have those same life draining abilities. It's an old fact of Minecraft that endermen take damage from water, so why do these not damage them? Now, granted, splash water bottles used to damage endermen, but in recent versions, they're bugged to just bounce off. Though, cauldrons on the other hand are just an illogical block, so my guess is that this just wasn't considered. And while I don't think that Minecraft should try for realism, I do think it's good for the game to be consistent to its own rules. So, if endermen take water damage here, this should be no different. Think of this mob like a bear trap. It burrows into the ground, and then, when you walk by, it pounces from the floor and attacks you. Which sounds bad, but this mob can actually be quite useful. See, if you were to throw two enchanted books, both with sharpness 5, into its mouth, it'll swallow them like so. And then, if we throw in a sword thereafter, it'll be enchanted now with sharpness 6. Yeah, this thing is basically a supercharged anvil, allowing for items that we could never have possible in vanilla. This looks like a spore blossom, but don't get it twisted. This here is the Flutter, a unique mob to the lush cave biomes. And as you can probably tell from looking at it, these things are passive and friendly. Though if you give it a handful of different flowers, it can be tamed to attack nearby enemies. But they don't have much health by default. And I say by default, because if you give them a flower pot to wear, they'll gain some armor points as well. Did you know that in real life, oak trees don't grow apples? Yeah, apparently the tree that does is called, coincidentally, an apple tree. Hard to miss that one. And that's not the only tree issue that we have inside of the game. And I think the idea here of changing in the different saplings to be the corresponding seed for the different trees is a really fun idea. For one, it makes more sense when they're falling from the leaves that you're breaking, but two, it gives us the best of both worlds. We get a unique item texture to play around with in item frames, and when you place it down, you still get that iconic sapling for things like flower pots. Which, when you get the intersection of both of the things working together, that's an idea that I'm gonna sign off on. Leads can be a valuable tool, but they also offer up some wonderful options for decorating. Or at least, they would if it was simpler to use. As is, to get a decorative rope in your world, we need to use mobs tied to the other end and then hide them away. Which, call me crazy, but that seems like overkill. So instead, why not take the simpler option and just let us tie leads between fences? That way we can have much more cooperative ropes in our builds, and also ditch the questionable treatment of animals. Minecraft's deserts feel, well, deserted. And I know, right? Duh. But as someone who lives in a desert, there's actually a lot of interesting foliage that can happen in these places. And I think they're just taking a page out of the most Desert Bloom resource pack. We can see that without adding in any new blocks, we're able to get a lot more variety to what these deserts are. And what I particularly like here is that we get different variations depending on whether they're in the Badlands or the desert biome. And really, it wasn't until looking at this that I realized just how often the dead bush texture is used within Minecraft. And seeing different variations for the taiga and swamp variants as well, that's a nice touch. And besides, with recent world generation, deserts have already gotten a lot more rare. We should make them feel a little bit more special to find. Like an oasis instead of a placeholder. When it comes to Minecraft building, variation is everything. So whether that's your trap door, your pressure plates, or even your boats, there are plenty of variants in the game to use the different wood types. Though, this crafting recipe seems neglected. See, chests are such a common thing in a Minecraft build that it would open up a ton of options to have different variants to choose from. And sure, this might make it more annoying when you try to craft with two different sets of planks, but the payoff is clearly worth it. Minecraft Dungeons added in this mob called the Enchanter, and now we've added them to the base game. Here, this guy enchants nearby mobs to make them into more powerful versions, which is intimidating for sure, but I think it also adds 
provides a fun challenge to your next raid. And since they're not that threatening by themselves, it makes sense that they try and buff the nearby Vindicators to give you some more trouble. And I think that's a welcome change of pace for the next time you get the Bad Omen effect. If you hear a zombie noise in a Soul Sand Valley, it's not your ears playing tricks, but it's probably the Wraith. These monsters are the trapped souls of other mobs, which is why they maybe sound so familiar. It's actually just a low-pitched noise of another mob. And functionally, these guys work like a mix between the Husk and the Stray, attacking us like a zombie, but giving us the slowness effect instead of hunger, which is a pain to put up with, but you'll want to take them down nonetheless, since these wraiths can actually drop an item called the Soul Bead, and if you use that, it can point you toward the nearest Nether Fortress, which should help you save some time. Some of you might be familiar with this secret item, the so-called Debug Stick, and while this allows for developers and builders alike to switch between block states, it's unfortunately only usable in creative mode, which is a shame since being able to rotate a misplaced block in survival would be a huge time saver. So in that case, maybe some form of wrench item going forward would be an elegant fix. Plenty of mods offer this already, whether that's the carpet mod's flipping cactus or Vanilla Tweaks' redstone rotation wrench, and either would be a welcome change. What if instead of Minecraft just having different fence types, it had different types of fences? And what I mean by that is taking after what you and Howl did here and giving each of the different wood types of fences their own distinct design. I mean, the same already happens for our doors and trap doors, so it would at least make some logical sense to happen like this. And while these already look great as a replacement, I think having these as an addition to our regular fences could be even better. I mean, after all, builders are always looking for new textures and types to build with, so why would you take one away when you could add one and be the hero to both camps? With the 1.16 Nether update came a bunch of new Nether Brick variants to use, which makes sense. But one notable exception to that bunch comes when we look at fences. Now, maybe it's just me, but it seems awkward to have a Nether Brick fence, then have a fence gate made of planks. So given that these are fences, not walls like the other bricks, why not add in a proper matching gate to do the trick? Granted, the Crimson Fence Gate offers a good substitute, but I would love to see the real thing. This bald eagle is a new neutral mob for us to play around with. And while it could be intimidating when they swoop down with their claws and try to attack us and others, there's something cool that happens when you tame them. See, after feeding them some fish oil, we earn the chance to equip these falcons with a hood and use them as something of a drone. And then if we line up a mob to hunt, we can direct the eagle to do just that, making for a handy companion and a beginner lesson in falconry. Based on this modded example, these creatures could offer a whole new reason to explore the rivers and marshlands that we're used to. And with the ability to tame and breed these, they could make for a cute pet to keep for the water as well. I mean, they certainly enjoy following after us in boats, so that seems like a good fit. And if they get the kind of planned features that we see mentioned, such as Rattle Otter's new variants, this could make for a great pal for the waterfronts. In recent updates, our potions look pretty different, but that's just the colors. And honestly, I think we can go even further, because really, unless you have these memorized, it's still pretty tough to tell which is which, especially if you have something like colorblindness. So, to make it more accessible and easier to see in a pinch, I think what Zally's does here with the potion pack is really interesting, since for this instance, each of the potions would have a different texture depending on what it was. And that's not where it just stops, but they also play off of that and give it different textures for the different modifiers as well. Like take an instant health potion getting even bigger the more health that it's gonna restore, or having it look like this if it's gonna give you more duration. But what I like most about this is that they give unique textures to the mundane, thick, and awkward potions. I mean, even Mojang couldn't do that. I mean, come on, what's the point of having these different potion types if you're not gonna give them a little bit of love and another texture? That's something I appreciate. Renewability is a staple of Minecraft. I mean, if you need it, there's probably a farm for it. But while we can get our cobblestone wood and even our totems reliably, sand is a different beast. Now, that's not to say that you can't get infinite sand, but as it is, you have to do it through a duplication glitch using the end portal, which I think we all can agree, it's not ideal. So going forward, maybe we can take after the carpet mod and get some renewable process to let us fill up on sand without having to drain a desert. Now, this looks like a blaze, but you wouldn't want to get the two confused, since this is a much more deadly opponent to come across. And you'll see as much when you get hit by its fireball wave attack, which might I also so add only gets stronger the less health it has. But these are worth fighting, not only for the blaze rods they drop, but also that it has a small chance to drop its own inferno helmet. Which, when you wear it, that'll give you extra protection against fire damage. You'll just have to sustain a lot of fire damage to get it. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.